so hi everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Raina Marilama. She's um, an, experiment, an experimentalist of many talents. She got her PhD from the University of Washington um, in atomic physics, uh, and then I guess has been moving slowly across the different experimental spectrum since then. She was a Chancellor's Fellow at um, UC Berkeley and LBNL. Um, a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and then she's been at Yale since 2013. Um, she's a Sloan Fellow and a Career Award winner, um, and the spokesperson for several experiments, so the cosine experiment, which I think we'll hear most about today, and also DM ice experiment, um, and is also a member of the Cori experiment, which is a uh, neutrino and double beta decay experiment, and also now has a new project on axions, which is kind of covering the spectrum of weakly interacting particle uh, possibilities. Um, so welcome, Raina. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the nice introduction. Um, so today I wanted to tell you about the, um, one of those experiments. Um, so the title of this talk is Testing Dana's Long Standing Plan for Dark Matter Detection. Um, and so I'll describe what we're doing uh, there. Um, so there is a question about what this picture is from. Um, so it's actually a picture from the South Pole. Um, and so one of the versions of this experiment um, is uh, residing at the South Pole. So I have a few slides on uh, what to do there. Um, but what I like about this picture is that it's, it's actually you know, not photoshopped at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can see, you, can see um, you, know, you just, uh, well, I didn't do it, uh, but uh, winter overs um, who are staying at the South Pole for you know, 10 months out of the year. Um, so they put a camera you know, out uh, on the snow, uh, put a little heater around it, open the shutter, right, and this is what you end up with. So you can see uh, into the center of our, our own galaxy, um, you know, where uh, many people are looking for dark matter annihilation signal to come from over there. Um, this is uh, counting, so uh, computing um, housing, house, housing building uh, at the South Pole for um, ice cube, um, and then you can see uh, aurora uh, right there. So, um, so it's really, really beautiful. So if I, you know, if I had a year uh, to spare, um, I would love to spend a year um, at the South Pole just, just to see that. I think that would be fantastic. Um, so um, I got into this uh, field um, through various ways, and um, actually, this uh, Silver Jubilee Symposium in 2012 was actually one of the first. Um, conferences that I went to in dark matter. Um, so this was the 25th um, anniversary um, and also uh, in celebration of uh, life uh, of uh, Ron uh, Brzezinski. Um, so this uh, paper was published in 1987 and it was actually um, the first uh, limit set on uh, cold dark matter. Um, so something that looks like a, a wimp uh, using a germanium uh, detector. Um, and here you'll notice, you know, some of the um, uh, familiar language. Uh, so you're using ultra-low background uh, spectrometer or detector uh, to look for cold dark matter candidate. Um, they're already using this 0.4 GV per uh, uh, cubic centimeter um, for density of uh, dark matter. Um, and they were looking for um, dark matter in the mass between uh, 17 GV and 2.5 uh, TeV. Um, and you know this language of uh, statistics of 60, at 68% confidence level. Um, so, um, so I just wanted to uh, show this. You know, we've we've been running these experiments for a really long time, um, and there is one experiment that claims to have uh, seen dark matter. Uh, that's Dama. Um, so I'll, I'll describe uh, how we uh, got to where we are today. Um, so uh, we've had many evidence for the existence of dark matter, and that's all coming from astrophysics. Um, so if you look at uh, out into the stars, you can see, uh, you know, invisible uh, gravity-inducing uh, uh, matter, something that has mass, um, and so you can see it in gravitational lensing. Um, you can see it um, in rotational curves. Uh, you can see in places like uh, coma cluster where. Uh, you have these uh, two clusters colliding with each other, um, and if you look at uh, um, gravitational lensing, um, you'll see some sort of mass uh, where this uh, blue stuff is, um, but then uh, there's gas colliding with each other, so that's where um, this. So you see that the, the two masses uh, of dark matter pass right through each other, 
uh, whereas uh, uh, regular matter can um, interact with each other and they get dragged. So that's, that was a nice evidence for um, existence of dark matter. Um, and so, and then you have pictures coming in from places like WMAP, uh, Planck, and all of this put together uh, shows us a picture of where we are today, where um, you know a big chunk of uh, the energy density of our universe is dark energy. Um, and uh, dark matter is 25% um, and atoms mostly in the form of gas um, uh, uh, is about 5% of the universe. And so now uh, we're all trying to figure out what this 25% uh, is about. So, um, so you know, in the 70s, uh, Vera Rubin uh, and her team uh, really did a careful study um, and this was you know, one of the, um, the big indications for uh, the presence of dark matter, um, and so what she was looking at is the rotational uh, velocity um, of these ga uh, spiral galaxies, um, and then she plotted um, the uh, the velocity of the stars that you see in spiral galaxy. Um, and so if you uh, plot out how much uh, mass you you uh, you see um, in the form of um, stars that we can see you would expect the rotation curve uh, to follow this red line. Um, and what she observed uh, was this, um, this uh, uh, white line. Uh, and so to, to do this, you need to invoke uh, extra, extra mass um, in these uh, galaxies. Um, and here's an example of what she was uh, plotting. So it was just the disk. Uh, you would expect velocity to follow um, this curve. Uh, if you invoke a halo of dark matter, you end up with what you observe in the uh, galaxies. So as she said, what you see in a spiral galaxy is not what you get. Um, so, uh, so through all of these observations, there are some conclusions that we can draw about uh, characteristics of dark matter that we uh, expect. Um, and so, uh, so this, um, uh, you know, needs, needs to have the uh, right uh, cosmic density. Um, sorry, this is uh, talking about WIMPs here. Um, so when you have the thermal production, you end up with uh, WIMPs. Um, and then you want to match requirements from uh, dark matter evidence and um, coming from, uh, uh, from these astrophysical observations. Um, so first of all, it has to be non baryonic in that we cannot see uh, the president, presence of this dark matter except for uh, uh, where it interacts with regular matter uh, with, um, by gravity. Um, and then uh, to, uh, to form uh, the distribution that we see today, they have to be non-relativistic um, and exert gravity. Um, and, but however, uh, they cannot interact very much with ordinary matter except for gravity. Um, they have to have existed since, uh, since uh, the beginning of the universe, so stable and long-lived. Um, and then the local density that we see is about uh, 0.39 uh, and this uh, incredible accuracy. So on average, um, you have a 0.39 plus or minus 0.03 GV per um, uh, cubic centimeter. And it's not any of the standard model particles that we know today. Um, so there are uh, several candidates, and so this is from a paper from 2015. Um, but so uh, you know, many uh, candidates for dark matter have been uh, proposed, um, and out of these, uh, WIMPs and um, axions uh, have been the uh, leading candidates um, in that we actually know how to uh, go and look for them. Um, and so uh, I'm primarily talking about uh, WIMP or WIMP-like uh, particles for this talk. Um, and for this, uh, we're talking about mass uh, between uh, GeV and 10 TeV, um, so proton mass and up. Um, and then uh, you, uh, with these particles, you uh, have a weak scale cross-section uh, that results in uh, observed abundance, so that's a nice coincidence. Um, and then we have many experiments that are running currently to look for this kind of um, particle. Um, so you have uh, DAMA, which I'll describe a little bit uh, today. Um, and of course, you have uh, many colleagues here who are looking for uh, WIMP or WIMP-like particles. So CVMS, LEX and LZ, um, Xenon, people, dark side, Panda X, and so on and so on. Um, and then uh, uh, with uh, the recent um, 
progress in uh, detector technology, um, and also uh, with these experiments uh, begin, uh, getting larger and larger, um, there have been uh, really exciting uh, developments for to look for uh, um, lengths that are lower in mass, so lower than uh, GeV, um, and that is also uh, an exciting development in the field um, that I will not describe uh, today, um, but a topic for a whole another talk. Um, the other leading candidate, uh, also exciting and uh, gaining um, uh, recent uh, excitement, uh, uh, are axions. Um, and so this is coming in at masses between uh, 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 6 eV. Um, and uh, it arises, it also solves another uh, problem in, uh, in a standard model um, in that um, it describes uh, the, um, the peche quinn solution to the strong CP problem, so why uh, the neutron EDM is so small. Um, and then there are several experiments uh, happening to look for axioms here. <clears throat> so you have uh, ADMX, Haystack, um, Radio DM that is here, um, and uh, uh, the, uh, Kadavra, uh, I shortened it, um, <laughs> it's very long, um, and uh, Casper. Okay, so a lot of uh, exciting new development in the uh, 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 field of dark matter uh, detection. Um, so, coming, you know, going back in history, um, direct detection of dark matter uh, search, um, the strategy for how to detect it was originally uh, proposed by Goodman and Witten in 1985. Um, and so I showed you, uh, you know, the first slide was from 1987, so you can imagine um, you know, the excitement around this time, so in just a couple of years, um, you went from uh, an idea uh, to the first limit. Um, and in this uh, paper, uh, they describe how um, given that we are, um, we are, uh, well, we're on the uh, we're, uh, in, the sun is uh, rotating uh, in the Milky Way, um, and then, you know, by looking at rotation curve like what Vera Rubin was looking at, um, we, you know, we have this uh, number of 0.39 uh, GeV per cubic centimeter. Um, and so, uh, with the solar system, um, the roots are riding along with the sun, you could, you're basically sampling uh, dark matter um, in, uh, um, in you know, everywhere on Earth. Um, and if you have a detector on that Earth, um, you could look for the off chance that um, your detector or nuclei in your detector would collide with uh, the wimps in the, the halo uh, of the dark matter that is surrounding our galaxy. So that original idea was um, set forth here. Um, and then uh, in this paper in 1986 between uh, Drew K. A. Fries and uh, Spurgle, they uh, really solidified this idea that you could, um, um, you could, uh, so they put real numbers um, to, to this uh, technique, um, and then they also started to talk about how you, look, how, how you could look for animal modulation uh, with this technique. So with the, um, the Earth rotating around the Sun, um, then you, in June you have the velocity of the Sun and the Earth um, adding up, um, so you would expect a higher rate of interaction in June than in December. That'll come in relevant um, when we talk about Dama. And so with this, we have you know, this picture of, uh, of our uh, universe of where we can look for uh, dark matter. Um, and it's coming from you know, all the different you know, distances from the sun. So here's a, a Earth-centric picture of the, <laughs> the universe. Um, but where, where you want to be looking for uh, dark matter is uh, you know, gathering, uh, looking at the evidence coming from astrophysics. Um, and then you could start looking for, um, for uh, uh, annihilation uh, potentially of uh, WIMP uh, and WIMP um, and so uh, WIMP and WIMP can annihilate with each other if you have dense enough um, uh, locations um, of um, uh, where WIMPs are um, and then they could annihilate to um, particles that we know how to detect like neutrinos or antimatter or you know so you can uh, do any of these detections um, and so then you can point your detector toward uh, where there, uh, you think there is an overdensity of dark matter and look for extra So that's your indirect uh, search can, uh, detections. Um, and then there are uh, work, there is work going on uh, in places like LAC to try to produce uh, dark matter um, so that you can uh, look for existence of dark matter. Um, and then direct detection 
Um, so this is where, uh, where um, my description of uh, experiment is, uh, status is. Um, and so with direct detection, uh, with the, uh, again, with the Earth and the Sun going around the Sun, you're looking for WIMPs to collide with, your, uh, with the nucleus in your detector. Um, and then WIMPs uh, go on their own merry way. You, you get a nuclear recoil of the, um, uh, recoil in the nucleus. Um, and once that happens, you can transfer uh, that energy to you know, electrons or phonons or you know, uh, um, uh, uh, heat or you know, whatever you know how to detect. Okay, um, and so let's do a couple of uh, uh, calculations, so back of the envelope calculations here. Um, and so this number keeps coming up and, uh, over and over. Um, and so uh, once you take that, um, and if you assume that mass of your dark matter is something like 100 GeV, um, you can just do a simple calculation, um, and you end up with uh, the density of 100 GeV, hypothetical 100 GeV, uh, dark matter particle uh, would be something like four uh, per liter. So you're going to have any, you know, any given time a couple um, of dark matter particles uh, in, in, a, in a volume like this. Um, and so uh, that's great, uh, but we're not static, right? Um, and so you um, in the sun's velocity, uh, 220 kilometers per second, um, and then Earth has like, you know, 10% um, on top of that. Um, and then you have uh, something like 10 million wimps passing through your hand. Um, you have to find it the right way. Um, but <laughs> uh, 10 million wimps passing through your hand for every second. Okay, so that's the scale of things uh, we're talking about. Um, and then uh, because the cross section that we uh, have set limits on is so well, you know, yeah, you don't really have any interaction uh, until you, know, you have to wait for a long time for this interaction to happen. So one of the diff difficulties, um, another difficulty um, of these kinds of detectors um, is that the momentum uh, that you uh, give to the nucleus is not very big. Um, so if you have, um, if you have limbs colliding uh, with a nucleus, um, you know, it's a lot easier to see if you give it a lot of energy. Um, but let's do, again, do a uh, simple calculation, and then you can just do this by uh, simple kinematics where you have, uh, so here you have your ener recoil energy um, is equal to the um, Q squared, so momentum uh, transfer squared, divided by uh, um, uh, 2 times the um, mass of the, the nucleus. Um, and so you work all of this out. Um, and then you end up with something like 30 kV is the recoil that you expect from 100 GeV uh, particle interacting with a regular nucleus. Um, and then the other uh, uh, difficulty we have is the rate of interaction that we could expect. Um, and so given what we know about the cross-sections of uh, these uh, particles, um, and you can also form um, the velocity distribution of this uh, dark matter also coming from uh, astrophysics uh, information that we have. Um, and so when you do this uh, and you include um, the cross sections that we know, so this is uh, coming from uh, some, you know, sigma naught, so uh, standard cross section uh, times a squared um, and then uh, form factor squared. So, well, you know, nuclear physics and particle physics all put together, let's say this is a uh, cross section of 10 to the minus 45. Uh, square centimeters, um, and then you have, you know, you're dealing with a, a, a real detector, so you have a, a threshold, so lower energy threshold, um, and that's indicated by like this yellow line, um, and then uh, so you have your uh, sun rotating, um, and then so you're basically just um, sampling the tail end of this velocity distribution with your detector, <coughs> where this uh, is given by the threshold. Um, and then you integrate over this, and this gives you the total rate of, uh, of uh, event that you can expect. Um, and so with these kinds of numbers, you, uh, and again, uh, with a rate of uh, 30 kV, uh, you have less than an event per kilogram per year. Um, and so this cross-section is actually much higher than the cross-section that we uh, set limits on already. Um, okay, so this is a uh, um, figure from that first uh, paper from 1987. Um, and you can, you can already start to see some of the, um, uh, these numbers in here. Um, 
And so here you can put a nice limit all down to maybe 30 kV, uh, right? And then you start to not quite uh, understand everything that's going on below the energy thresholds of the germanium detector. Um, and then you can see those numbers like uh, you know, fractions of a, or sorry, uh, 10 counts per um, you know, fraction of a kV. Um, so now you're starting to talk about these numbers. Um, so with this first experiment, um, uh, you're already starting to be in the regime of these uh, very simple calculations and they didn't see anything. Okay, um, so um, uh, I already talked a little bit about the annual modulation. Um, and so this is um, the signature that Dana saw, um, is that uh, they, um, they saw a peak in their signal in June. Um, and then they saw less events um, in December. Um, and they've uh, been doing this experiment, as, and they first um, claim, um, uh, talked about their results in 1997. Um, so it's a result that's been around for a really long time. And by the same token, you can look for, um, for different kinds of events. So if you have a, a detector that is very, very low in background, you could actually look for individual nuclear recoils, and that is what's happening in some of the modern detectors like CDMS, um, Xenon, um, and then annual modulation. And you could also even look for the annual modulation, so the first rotation can do this. So if you have a directional experiment, you could do that. Okay, so you put all of this together, um, and then you, uh, you have a, a picture like this. So this is for, for those of you who um, are not in dark matter uh, fields. Um, uh, this is an exclusion plot of all of the uh, WIMP, uh, simple version of WIMP nucleon cross-section uh, plotted against the, the WIMP uh, mass of the WIMPs. Um, and so there are various experiments here um, that have seen, so here's the 10 to the minus um, uh, 45 uh, cross-sections that I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and then uh, uh, various experiments uh, like Super CDMS, uh, Z uh, sorry, Xenon Montan, so uh, it's from 2006, so the current limits are coming all the way down into here. Um, and so, so these experiments have excluded uh, with cross sections of bigger than 10 to the minus 45, uh, let's say at 100 GeV, um, or you know, that larger uh, cross section um, at lower masses. So, so that's the exclusions coming from those experiments. Um, and then you see a couple of islands um, here. Um, and so uh, primarily you have a DAMA experiment that claims to have seen animal modulation. So that's indicated in, um, in uh, uh, brown. Um, and then a weaker signal um, that, is, uh, that has since, uh, uh, since then uh, been uh, mostly ret uh, re uh, retracted. Um, so here's a region from, from uh, CDMS. Um, and then, so both of these experiments are doing uh, their due diligence to actually go uh, look at those signals. And so it's really the DAMA that uh, remains as a big signal. Um, so there have been other uh, experiments that try to, try to look for um, annual modulation um, and also um, other kinds of interactions. So uh, what I have been describing is a, is a very vanilla, simple model of uh, dark matter. Um, where you just have a, a particle interaction of massive wind colliding with um, nucleus. Um, and you can invoke uh, different physics um, to look for um, different kinds of interactions, different kinds of dark matter. Um, and so here's uh, one search where um, xenon didn't see anything um, that could produce a DAMA signal. Um, and then here, uh, so here's a 2018 xenon-1 uh, limit. Uh, that basically, so Dama's signal is so uh, big, it's not even really on this figure, um, and so they didn't see it. Um, and here is a, um, a spin independent, so different kinds of uh, dark matter interaction where um, they didn't see it. Um, so where we stand now is that there's no sign of winds down to this 10 to the uh, minus 46 uh, square centimeter cross section. Um, and then uh, uh, no sign of spin dependent with uh, uh, for 10 to the minus 40 um, from Coop, uh, Pico, Ice Cube, and so on. Um, and then uh, we have other experiments that are driving uh, searches down into these lower mass regions, um, and yet uh, DAMA signal remains uh, unsolved. Um, and so what is this DAMA uh, that I keep mentioning? 
Um, and so their experiment looks something like this. Um, so uh, what they have is um, uh, 25, uh, an array of 25 sodium iodide uh, detector. Um, and so this is something that you might see in advanced labs, right? But they have a you know, much lower background version of this. Um, they have two PMTs uh, attached to the sodium iodide so that you can uh, trigger off of a lower uh, energy event. Um, so you do a coincidence uh, tagging. Um, and they, they put this uh, at Grand Sasso Underground Laboratory. Um, so they've had two versions uh, running. Um, uh, actually, uh, uh, two versions running. Uh, with the uh, first version was 100 kilograms, the next, second version was to uh, 250 uh, kilograms um, at a background of about a count per kV per kilogram per day. Um, and so when uh, their publication for phase one was coming out, uh, they already had a 1.3 ton year over 14 annual cycles. Um, and so this is the kind of signal that you see. Um, so here's the um, uh, residuals or the amplitude of the annual modulation. So you just subtract the base uh, background, um, and then year after year after year. Um, yeah. So it's the CP day counts per day. Counts per day, per kilogram, per kV. Yeah, and then this is in uh, days. Um, and so, but it's one year from here to here, right? So it's one, one, two, three, four. This five, is important. Seven. What does the per yeah. kilovolt mean? Um, and so you you uh, uh, you have to. Well, they're binning their. Um, their counts, so you you um, you integrate over the number of counts over uh, as, uh, energy. So I'll show it to you um, here. Okay, so here if you just uh, plot your energy spectrum, so here's rate counts per day per kilogram per kV per versus energy. Um, then if you integrate these counts between let's say two and three kV, that's uh, then now you have a counts per day per kilogram. Does that make sense? Between two. So if you integrate uh, the number of counts uh, over one kV in this uh, in this plot, then you end up with counts per day per kilogram. Is that what they did? Yeah, basically. So this is this is um, the counts in the total energy rate between two and four kilovolts. So in that plot, in that plot, it's two to four kV. That's right. It's an average over two to four kV. Um, and then they have a version of plot, the plot for 2 to 6 kV, um, and so on. Okay, um, so here's the energy uh, spectrum. Um, and then if you take the modulation amplitude, right, so the amplitude of, of this, um, then, and then you plot it against your energy, then you can see that most of your signal is coming uh, at uh, below. Uh, so it's basically between 2 to 6 kV, where is where you end up with um, the largest signal, which is generally consistent with what you would expect from a large cross-section dark matter. And so the claim is that, the, you know, their claim is that this, uh, they've checked for everything, uh, it has to be dark matter. Um, and so since then, they've been running uh, for another seven years. Um, and so they have a, a new paper that uh, came out last year. Um, and so they continue, right? So now um, this result, uh, is coming in at like 13 uh, sigma. Um, and one thing that they did was to extend their energy into even lower energy. So not only do they see it at 2 kV, um, they see it uh, down to 1 kV. Um, and so this um, is, uh, is still kind of consistent with dark matter, um, but nobody else uh, can see you know, a signature that looks anything remotely like it. Um, so when you have results like this, you, you get you know a lot of uh, news uh, articles. Um, so this is like a, a news that came out around um, Halloween. Um, so zombie physics, six baffling results that just won't go away. Um, so they call me up and you know, Ray, know what's happening? Can you tell me tell us what's happening? Um, you also have like physicists you know making bets uh, against each other. So here's Katie Freeze. Um, so she was in that first uh, paper that described the annual modulation. Um, so she did that. Uh, and uh, his, uh, Frank Wilczek. Um, so I think she made a pretty good bet. Um, so basically, Katie loses $1 max in this. Um, and then you had a referee even uh, with some others. Um, OK. Um, OK, so what, what's really happening here? Um, so here's a slide. Um, that, that you might recognize if you uh, um, have been in the dark matter field for 
um, over here. <laughs> um, so uh, here's uh, you know kind of interpretation um, that people have come up with, um, and it's a slide from Dama, and they say that they have um, uh, thought about um, and rejected. And here are all the different papers uh, that you we need to go and read uh, to see <laughs> what they are doing. Uh, and so you know, what about different models of dark matter? So is it you know WIMPs? Is it other kinds of dark matter? Um, you know, do you have different interactions? Uh, spins, you know, what about your halo model, do we know that really well? Um, and then, you know, what about the experimental um, aspects? Um, and so, and then, you know, what their claim is that uh, they see a clear signal, other experiments don't see any signals, uh, but if you uh, think about all of these things, uh, then there's no way to um, check the result with uh, experiments that are not like theirs, that are not um, sodium iodide, um, it's an apples to oranges comparison. Um, you also uh, have, um, you know, uh, you know, people thinking about, well, is it, could, could Dama and other experiments still, uh, you know, both be right and still come up with, uh, with a viable candidate for dark matter that can describe um, both of these? Um, and so this is uh, not, you know, this is. Uh, different kinds of uh, dark matter uh, that people have been thinking about. Um, it's a slide from Tim Tate, um, and so he, you know, he just here uh, put together the, all the different kinds of dark matter that you could do. But the point that he wants to make here is that dark matter binds all of physics together. Um, but anyway, you can see all the different kinds of dark matter here. And then, you know, uh, what about, uh, well, as, as an experimentalist, you know, you really want to be thinking about, you know, you see an optimal oscillation there's lots of things that can actually annually, um, and so you know, have you thought about um, all of the different things that can change over the course of the year? Um, Anyone else that exact that same experiment, identical experiment elsewhere? But so that's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're doing. Uh, right. So okay, so you you know you, you people suggested radon temperature, all of these uh, you know different things, and they say um, all of these. It induces uh, effects that are much smaller. We have it all under control. We don't think um, any of these things can, um, well, uh, describe um, uh, the modulation that they see. Um, and then uh, people uh, uh, have lots of great, great ideas. Um, so every few years, um, you'll see papers like this where um, one model explains Dama Libra cogens. So this is from John Hurlston. Um, and so he said, uh, if, you, if you look at um, uh, potassium uh, uh, decay, um, you could explain everything. Um, and uh, so far, this hasn't pan out. Um, and uh, uh, David Nigren says, well, if you, you know, maybe you can have phosphorescence uh, induced by muons that are going through your crystals. Um, and so we uh, uh, um, looked at this, and that doesn't seem to be uh, the case either. Um, and then uh, Jonathan Davis said, well, what if you combine, so, you know, the, uh, it's hard to get the phase um, and the amplitude correctly, but if you have two uh, things that, are, that have uh, annual modulation and you combine them uh, arbitrary uh, amplitude, then you can produce any um, phase that you want. Um, and so what about neutrinos? Um, and here's one from Dan McKinsey. Um, you know, maybe it's, it's radioactive argon because Lux sees uh, argon and it's really awesome. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, the latest one was uh, helium. Uh, you know, maybe helium uh, is getting into um, into their system um, that can uh, induce afterglow in the PMTs, um, and that could mimic um, dark matter signal. Um, and then from here, right, you have to like get again that phase and that modulation amplitude and all of that. So there's lots of uh, good ideas, uh, but as you alluded to, um, the thing to do is to go ahead and repeat the experiment, I think. So, you know, all of these ideas are great, but it's actually really hard to test it for you know, somebody else's experiment and what, what they might be doing. Um, so there's, there's actually a community of us um, trying to do this, and we all have um, slightly different approaches. Um, and so uh, here, um, uh, the two experiments that I'm going to talk to you about is DMI-17 um, and cosine 100. Um, so DMI-17 uh, came out of the idea that um, if you have, if Dama's um, annual modulation is really due to dark matter, 
um, you should see the same signal everywhere on Earth. So you should have the same amplitude, you should see the same um, phase everywhere on the Earth. Um, and so if you put um, a detector like this uh, in the southern hemisphere where the, um, where the seasons are um, opposite, um, you would expect whatever you know, um, annual modulation, if it's due to some sort of environmental effect, um, you would expect to be uh, different in phase. Um, so that was the origin of this idea. Um, with uh, cosine 100 um, anise, um, the, these are straightforward. Let's just repeat the experiment. You know, do this as similar as possible. Let's see if we see, you know, if we can reproduce the, the, the result. Um, Dama is continuing to run. Um, and then you have Sabre, uh, which is uh, going for a much lower background um, sodium iodide uh, experiment. Um, and so if you uh, can grow um, crystal that have much lower in the background, you turn it on um, and you don't even see uh, the rate of um, counts that is at that annual modulation amplitude, then um, you're, you're done. Right? Um, so they've been spending a long time uh, trying to develop uh, crystals that are um, ultra pure, which actually turns out to be harder than, um, it's, it's actually really hard. Um, and Cosmius, um, is has a really interesting idea in that um, so sodium iodide, um, you can cool it down to make it a bolometer. Um, so, uh, um, so the cryogenic uh, bolometer experiment. So once you do that, then you can have, you know, it could be like the modern day um, dark matter experiment. You have two different signals and you could uh, differentiate between nuclear recoil and electron recoil. Okay, um, so I'll tell you a little bit about uh, DMIs and what we saw here. Um, and so uh, this experiment um, was uh, carried out in conjunction with ice cube. Um, and so uh, it's below the ice um, at the South Pole. Um, so the idea again was uh, if you have, um, uh, if you put an experiment at the South Pole, you're gonna end up with different seasons. Um, it turns out that the uh, ice at the South Pole is very, very clean. So it's actually a really nice uh, place to do a dark matter experiment where you're uh, worried about um, any sort of gamma um, uh, background um, and you have this overburden. Um, and then you have a very stable environment um, and so you put your detector there, you can't even uh, get to it. Um, and so over the course of the year, um, everything is very much uh, stable. And then the, the last but not least is the science inf infrastructure. Um, so when I first started this experiment, um, I looked for various places in the southern hemisphere. Um, so it turns out uh, currently there are no um, underground um, facilities um, in the southern hemisphere. Um, there are a couple of places that are um, trying to come up and do this. So, um, so Australia is uh, making one in uh, the gold mine. Um, so that's, that's where Sabre wants to go as well. Um, and then uh, Argentina, uh, but they, they're still not operational. Um, and then South Pole just, you know, had this uh, convenient ice cube, uh, in, uh, and they were even drilling holes uh, two and a half kilometers into the ice. So that's where we put it at the bottom of ice cube here. Um, okay, so uh, when we uh, uh, started this, um, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of time to put this together, um, and so we. Uh, we, uh, when the community came to um, ask if we could do this, we basically had one year uh, to put it together. Um, and so what we could do was to do um, a feasibility um, study. And so uh, here we were in 2000, February, beginning of 2010, uh, we uh, got a couple of crystals uh, that were used as a, a part of NIAD, um, so another dark matter experiment. Um, and then uh, by September, we were assembling this into a pressure, uh, stainless steel pressure vessel uh, that could survive two and a half kilometers of, um, of water uh, column. Uh, by December, we had shipped the detector. Um, here's like an experimentalist, like worst nightmare to have your um, experiment be uh, forklifted over <laughs> so, um, and here we are, December 11, 2010. Uh, one of the modules went in, um, and here it is, uh, going into uh, ice cube hole, um, never to be seen again. Um, so the detector survived, um, and here's what we see. Um, so here, again, the rate in counts per day per kilogram uh, per uh, kV. Um, and so our, our, um, so the, 
the background that we that Dama has is something like one count here. Um, and so with these crystals that we had um, unearthed uh, from uh, UK, um, had potassium that, um, that was much uh, higher than uh, what we knew that they had these, uh, this problem. Uh, but so um, here we are, so it's, it's about 30 uh, counts here. Um, but otherwise, uh, they're a pretty good uh, crystal. And we could see the detectors freezing in nicely. Um, so here's uh, days versus temperature. Um, and here's the rate versus time. Um, so here's more pictures from the South Pole. Um, so with this, um, we could also we could do an annual modulation uh, search, um, except that the error bars are much bigger than, so here's Dama Libra, um, and the error bars are much bigger, uh, but we uh, none, nonetheless we did it. Um, and so here's where we are. So here's a polar plot. Um, what, this is what you would expect from dark matter phase. Here's uh, Dama's results. So it's a small circle offset from zero uh, a little bit. Um, and here's, here's where we are. Um, but we, we're still on this map here. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so after uh, Ice Cube. Wait, is this, there's way too much stuff. I mean, did you see a signal or did you not see so a signal? We did not see a signal. So. What are those one sided <laughs> Okay. Right, so red circle is what uh, what we could. So here's here's an easier uh, visualization, maybe. So Dama's amplitude versus uh, ener uh, energy, right? So the signal is all in here, two to four keV. Uh, so uh, uh, modulation amplitude, two to four keV. Um, we didn't quite get down to the two keV uh, threshold. But we could not what versus what? What's energy, the exact energy. So integrated over a two kilovolt bin centered at that energy? Uh, for for the DMIs, yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so it's a proof of principle uh, detector. Uh, we uh, we're not sensitive enough to uh, to really uh, tell apart uh, Dama from zero, uh, but nonetheless, it worked enough for us to be able to do this experiment. That's the conclusion that I wanted to get up. This is yeah. the, most, the, the most important thing, and I'm not getting it all. So this is uh, the, your little blue dots mm -hmm. are pretty noisy, and you look at the. This is unmarked. This x, this x axis is unmarked, but I presume. Yeah. Sorry, the, the other figure uh, went on top of it. So here's uh, two kV this this bin, and then uh, two, three, four, five, six. What does that mean? Modulation amplitude counts per day, and it's yeah. 0 0.02. That's right. If I remember correctly, the Dama numbers were kind of that. That's right. So that's the Dama's. Uh, so blue is Dama Libra. And then DMI is red and, and green in two different detectors. So, um, so we didn't see, uh, so can I move on? Because we didn't see anything here and I want to talk about cosine 100, it's, which is actually a little bit bigger detector and it's, it's more fun. Okay, all right, so we did, we did this experiment. It was a feasibility study um, that it, you can do a dark matter search at the South Pole uh, when ice cube construction uh, will happen again. We will put in more detector um, and I would love to, to do a bigger experiment. Okay, let's talk about cosine 100. Um, so cosine 100 came together uh, when the Kim's uh, collaboration, who uh, who was already thinking about doing something like this, um, and we uh, figured out that we uh, had, the, had the common goal, um, and we joined for uh, we decided to for join forces um, and actually uh, do the experiment together. Um, so this uh, experiment is uh, currently running. It's been uh, so we started our physics run in September of 2016. Um, and then we have altogether uh, eight crystals uh, totaling 106 kilograms. Um, so if you remember, uh, you don't have to remember, but Dama's first version had uh, roughly 100 kilograms uh, operating. Um, and this is at, um, at a place called uh, Yang Yang uh, Laboratory, uh, which is about three hours drive from Seoul. It's cut down to like two hours after the Olympics, so they have a better highway now. Um, and so, uh, so, so yeah, so it's a you know convenient place if you uh, live in uh, Korea. 
Okay, um, so uh, this experiment has uh, some of the similar feature as uh, many of the other dark matter experiments um, in that um, it has this um, uh, many layers of different shielding that is happening. Um, and uh, what's different uh, uh, from Dama experiment is that, um, it, so in the middle we have this uh, sort of uh, crystals, so in the middle of this box we have the sodium iodide crystals. Surrounding it is liquid scintillator for additional research that will tell us more information um, about what, uh, events that are coming from outside and also escaping from the array of uh, crystals. Um, and then we additionally have these uh, muon uh, plastic scintillators. So if there are uh, muons that are getting through the mountain through our detectors, um, we can tag them. Um, so, um, so this experiment um, came together when, uh, um, when DMIs and Kim's, the two collaborations, realized that uh, so we had independently been doing uh, R&D to grow uh, crystals that are low enough in background to be able to do this experiment. Um, and so when we realized uh, that altogether um, we have 100 kilograms um, throughout this uh, R&D, um, then we decided to put it together uh, as an experiment. Um, so uh, you don't have to <laughs> read through all of this, um, but if, uh, uh, what, what I wanted to show you was, uh, is that the, these are the, um, so the, the backgrounds that are, um, that are, uh, that are uh, present in these detectors are coming from residual uh, radioactive um, isotopes. Um, so primarily these are coming from places like uh, potassium-40, um, uranium-238, um, lead-210, which is uh, reflected in uh, the alphas also, um, and then uh, thorium-232. Um, and so what we achieved was a level that is uh, similar to, to DAMA uh, in uh, some of the crystals, uh, but not all, um, in uh, potassium, uranium, thorium, so all of this. Um, and then what we had was also this light yield, so the number of photons that are detected um, in each uh, of these crystals uh, uh, were, uh, so some of them were far exceeding what Dama was seeing, which is uh, 5, um, as opposed to the 14 or 15 that we see in many of our detectors. Okay, um, so here's a picture um, of, uh, of our detector. Um, so you have uh, eight uh, sodium iodide crystals. Um, encapsulated uh, with PNTs on either end. Okay, um, so again, uh, some pictures from uh, the construction. So we started in December of 2015 with an empty room, uh, leveling it out. Um, by January, um, we had um, uh, the outside of the lead shielding coming up. Um, and here it is, the copper box going in uh, in February. Uh, and then closing up uh, the detector so that the whole thing can come in and out, the whole detector can come in and out of the lead shield. Um, and then by March, we had the um, muon paddles installed. Um, in April, uh, we started installing the inside of it, and by June, uh, we had the detectors installed. Um, and September, we started taking data, September 2016. Um, so what we did here uh, was to do uh, a detailed uh, background uh, to um, uh, um, uh, background uh, to simulation uh, comparison, um, and so uh, uh, we took all of the material uh, that we have um, and took all of the radioactive um, uh, contamination, uh, put it into our simulation. Um, so here's a Jam Four simulation package. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then we could uh, basically um, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah come up. So here's the the red in red has shown the the total of the simulation uh, background ex expected background from the simulations, um, and then black um, is is the data. So we have a pretty good um, um, uh, agreement between the data and simulation. Um, and with this, what we could do was actually go and look to see if there's excess in background. So this is not quite yet the annual, annual modulation search, um, but this is uh, looking for a dark matter-like uh, signature. Um, and so here uh, is 
Um, again, uh, uh, this plot of counts, again, this, uh, this time it's actually the total number of counts uh, versus the energy uh, between 2 to 6 kV. Um, and so what we see is this black or bluish, uh, sorry, black dots are our data um, in this uh, unit here. Um, if you had a, a wind that, uh, that would create uh, something like what gamma is seeing, so 10 GeV, uh, a 10 to the minus 40 uh, square centimeters, um, you would expect your um, uh, background spectrum to have uh, to come up with this red line here. Um, and so if you subtract, uh, if you do a, a data minus the, the fit, you end up, or a data minus yeah, the fit, you end up with, with this. Um, so we don't see this excess of events here. And with this, we can say, yeah. If you do a statistical comparison of the null hypothesis to the wind, because it wasn't in the paper. Yeah, so that's, that's how we get the, um, well, so, uh, uh, so statistical comparison of the um, so the error bar right, so error bars here are coming purely from our uh, best understanding of the, the background right here. No, but I mean, yeah. you do a chi square of one versus the other. Uh, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. because it wasn't in the paper. Ah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, right. Um, and then with that, we can set a limit on the background. So uh, with this, we actually can say that gamma uh, signal is not due to the vanilla, like normal vanilla winds um, that um, other experiments have also passed. So we, we, we don't see uh, dark matter uh, in the form of winds in sodium hydride um, either. Um, and so this uh, paper, uh, this was published in um, Nature earlier uh, this year. Um, and so we continue uh, with this, um, with the, the news, right? So people, people like this result a lot. So the controversial sighting of dark matter is looking even shakier. Um, uh, and then you have, you know, uh, several uh, different um, science news, um, physics today. Um, you know, economists. Uh, you know, I got into the, we got into the economists uh, somehow. Um, that you know, that that's a different kind of thing. Um, in in German, um, talk, talking about Dunkel ma uh, materials, you know. Um, and for me personally, the most satisfying was to see it in uh, Nature Japan. I'm, I'm originally from Japan. Uh, so I was gratifying to see this in Japanese as well. Okay, um, so that was that was fun. That was great. So that was just with the 60, first 60 days of data. Um, but of course, the ultimate test, right, would be to, to be looking at the annual uh, modulation of this. Um, so um, with uh, we've been running uh, for about uh, almost three years now. Uh, but here's what we would expect in um, five years. Um, so if there is no signal, um, so here's a, a, a phase plot that is a little bit easier to see. Um, and so uh, phase uh, is plotted uh, in, in this direction, right? Um, and what you would expect uh, from a standard dark, dark matter would have a peak um, in, in that region, right? so that's a gene. Um, gamma's, uh, and then the amplitude of the signal uh, is distance from uh, the center, um, and gamma signal is, is in blue. Make sense? Um, so if there is no signal uh, with cosine 100, five years, and you have uh, 68, 90, and 99% uh, confidence level, you would expect something like this, right? So we would, uh, with 68% uh, confidence level, be able to reject the gamma. Um, and if there is signal, you would see something like this. So you would be pulling away from, uh, starting to pull away from zero with uh, cosine 100, five years. Okay, um, so uh, we published, um, uh, 1.7 years uh, of data uh, uh, so far. Um, so this is on the archive now, and it was just accepted at PRL. Um, and so here's the modulation amplitude uh, versus energy again. Um, and in blue and green is what you're seeing, uh, what Dama is seeing. Um, and red is our signal. Um, and so we actually have a slight um, excess in the modulation amplitude in our lowest energy bin, um, although the, the, we still have a, uh, we don't have enough statistics to really pull away from this area. 
Um, and then the other bins are basically uh, consistent with uh, zero. And so with this, um, I'm sorry for the slightly different figure, um, but again, the uh, uh, phase uh, amplitude versus phase, so this is in the style of uh, xenon modulation <coughs> search. Um, and so again, dama is here, the phase um, that is uh, similar to standard halo, um, and then cosine uh, has an amplitude that is very uh, similar to uh, that of uh, dama, uh, but then the statistical uh, significance is is not pulling us away from zero quite just yet. Okay, um, around the same time, Anais also um, uh, put out a paper on the archive, um, and so, so it's a little bit uh, small to see, um, but maybe the best one is to, is to look, look at it here. So again, this is the annual uh, modulation amplitude versus energy, boy, this is really hard to see. Um, and so they don't see an excess in events in their lowest energy like we do. Um, so they're much more consistent with no modulation at the moment. So we don't quite have an answer just yet. Um, and so stay tuned uh, for, for the future. Okay. Um, so we're continuing to think about how to really pull uh, our, our signal away from uh, zero or um, uh, to distinguish uh, Dama signal from uh, zero. Um, and so we're working on uh, cosine 200. Um, so it turns out one of the mo uh, biggest challenges is to get the, the sodium iodide crystals that are low enough in the background. Um, and so this is what we're working on now. All right, um, so I'll summarize here. Um, we've had many decades now um, of uh, direct detection web searches, um, and we have this situation where many experiments don't see uh, anything, except we have this one uh, experiment, uh, Dama, who uh, uh, continues to see this annual modulation. Um, and so uh, now what we want to uh, do is to you know, go look at that. Um, we also are seeing some hints right, from indirect detections, um, and uh, you know we, that is a whole another story um, that I, you know that that would be exciting to see results coming from. Um, upcoming Gen two, so that these larger um, direct detection experiments uh, may yield signal. We don't know yet, um, and that will be uh, really exciting uh, to see. Uh, but then you know these experiments are getting so big that we're uh, starting to see neutrinos. Uh, you know, potentially as the dominant background in those experiments. So, uh, where do we go from, from there? Um, and so that's our conversation that we're having in the dark matter um, uh, community. Um, and so there are many new ex uh, WIMP and axion experiments that are coming online, in particular in the low uh, masses. Um, so I look forward to seeing uh, what's coming out there. Um, and you know, when do we say you know? Yes, we know what dark matter is, um, and to do that, I think we are going to need a consistent picture of um, you know what we see in astrophysics um, and uh, in our ground-based detectors, um, and then the <coughs> signal, of course, has to be um, reproducible, um, and th those has to be uh, you know consistent across different targets, cross-section, um, annual modulation, uh, and so on. Um, so with that, um, I. I want to uh, thank my, uh, you know, my group uh, members, um, and uh, actually one of uh, them, Katie, uh, is going to come here as a graduate uh, student next year, um, so you'll be seeing her around as well. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, uh, data, um, and so we 
can reliably do this to two kV, uh, and one kV, um, we, you know, we have a result that is almost ready to uh, talk about. Uh, so one kV seems feasible, two kV is higher. Uh, total background rate, we have about two to three times um, that much background rate. My recollection is that even in their 2K EV bin, their efficiency was already falling to something like, I don't know, 30, 40%. Yeah, uh, it's like 2K EV is still at like um, 70, 80%. For Donna? Uh, I think oh, it's oh, not sorry. so bad, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Any question on your sensitivity or your plot mm -hmm. um, for the annual modulation for the Cosine 100? Um, yeah. Uh, this one. So it looks like uh, yeah. Uh, so it looks like yeah. It looks yeah. like you're close to system. The systematic uncertainty is similar to the statistical uncertainty. Is that going to improve uh, with the amount of? Um, so we'd have to have a better understanding about background. Um, and so so it's dominated by the background yeah, uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Follow up on that. Um, did you do a safe figure out your background? Yeah, so, um, so we, uh, yes, so we have assays of um, the materials that are immediately surrounding it, um, but backgrounds at the lowest energies are dominated by what's inside the crystal, which is harder to, um, it's harder to do. So it's, it's really all in situ. We have a lot of backgrounds we can actually calibrate. <laughs> So sorry. So to to do is it, uh, we blind the data below six kV so that we don't um, we don't um, bias our understanding of the background. So we do all of our background analysis above six kV, um, and then we open we open box, so to say. Do you have any hypothesis at all uh, for what would create what annual modulation at gamma? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are many. <laughs> um, so um, I, I think what is uh, plausible, um, and uh, Lawrence and I were talking about this earlier this morning, so you know, if, if there's something about the tagging uh, of, so you know, we're looking at single events where you say, I reject everything that had multiple crystals triggered. Um, and so if that efficiency changes over time, it's potentially um, a source of background, although it's hard to imagine something that is so consistent over 20, 20 years. Um, another you know, thing is that they are actually pretty regular about how they um, run their experiments. So like, you know, they, they do calibration every you know, 10 days, or, you know, so they're very, very systematic about it. So actually that could, that could make, end up with, um, somebody came up with a potential, um, maybe there's, there's agricultural activity in the area that could, um, so we, we actually noticed that when we were growing our crystals, um, uh, the, the powder um, vendor let us know, so we're using people in um, Illinois, uh, they let us know that there are times of the year it's better to grow these uh, powder because of the agricultural activity in Illinois. Um, and so the potassium is uh, fertilizer. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, so then uh, somebody came up with a hypothesis, maybe there's something happening you know, in Grand Sasso and air coming in, so on and so on. So on. But it's hard to do something consistently for over two decades. Yeah. Any questions? All right, uh -huh.